Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company getting replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. And this story I think is really important. It's a story that hasn't got a lot of coverage due to lockdown and also COVID related news. And following on from the ruling in the High Court about EncroChat, I think this is very relevant and also needs to be discussed. And we'll definitely be following up with some more EncroChat news in the next few days. Initially back in October, MPs have backed the latest stage of a bill to give undercover agents permission to commit crimes on operations. This was initially described as the James Bond bill because of MI5's involvement, but this will in actual fact go across the board. NCA will be able to use this and various other law enforcement agencies. The government says the legislation has sound legal footing for those who want to protect the public. Some MPs were divided over the implications for human rights and also civil liberties, very similar to what the European Union said about EncroChat, about human rights, civil liberties and mass surveillance. Former Tory Minister David Davies has warned that the bill could impinge on innocent people and during the debate the Shadow Home Secretary Nick Thomas Simmons said Labour would not oppose the bill at this stage. He said the party would seek to improve it on the vital issue of safeguards so that the public can have confidence in the process of law enforcement bodies carrying out vital work to keep us safe. The legislation would explicitly authorise MI5, the police, the National Crime Agency and other agencies that use informants or undercover agents to commit specific crimes as part of the operation. The law will require MI5 officers and others to show that the crime was necessary and also proportionate and security officials did not say which crimes they considered authorising. And the reasoning for this was that they didn't want to tip off any criminals or terrorists as to the techniques they may use. So it's very secretive. So it's so secretive that we don't even know what they're doing. However, it states that they must not breach the Human Rights Act, which requires the government to protect life. In further coverage by the BBC, they went on to say that the bill was called the Covert Human Intelligence Sources Bill. And the legislation, in actual fact, could create a license to commit actual crimes by undercover agents and also for informants to commit crimes as part of their work. Critics have said that an agent is not like James Bond. They shouldn't be running around trying to save the Queen. An agent is someone in the community who is recruited by the police, security agencies and other investigators to go undercover and disrupt criminal and serious activity and threats to the nation. I was one of the ministers who took through the Secret Intelligence Service Act through the House. Uh, in that act, there is uh, now a clause, or now Section 7, uh, which enabled MI6 officers abroad to commit crimes uh, in the interests of the state. Uh, inevitably, in a tabloid press, it became known as the James Bond clause, but that is actually precisely what it was not. It was not a license to kill. It was a license to bribe, burgle, uh, blackmail, uh, bug, but it was not a license to kill. They say that many terrorist attacks have been foiled using these techniques and this is the main argument as to why they are actually pushing it. Given that Labour are not opposing it, given the current situation with Labour, they don't really have any sort of position to argue anything. The Environment Agency sometimes runs undercover jobs into toxic waste. And the UK medicines watchdog is constantly on the hunt for black market gangs selling counterfeit drugs. Any agency that uses an agent in an investigation will be given this permission. This may include recruiting smugglers to gather evidence and intelligence. And because the person has the right experience and criminal credibility to fit into a dangerous gang, this would make it effective. It's unrealistic to put someone into a drug network without them being prepared to sell the merchandise. You're unlikely to get a terror sale if the person that you've put in there will not commit a crime, they say. There is very little information in the public domain of the rules that the Secret Service MI5 and MI6 have to operate by. So of course, in theory, preventing terror attacks and things like this are obviously good. 
but how can these sort of powers be abused? And this example that I'm going to give now from the 7th of October shows exactly how it does get abused. Bob Lambert was a Scotland Yard undercover police officer during the 1980s. And he began a long-term relationship with a woman called Jackie and fathered a son known as TBS. Bob Lambert had infiltrated an animal rights and environmental protest group. And he used the identity of a seven-year-old boy who died in the 60s to form a long-term relationship with Jackie. They had a son in 1985 and two years later, he disappeared when the undercover operation ended. He said that he fled the country because of his involvement in the protests. And in 2014, the Met Police paid Jackie £425,000 compensation after she made the discovery about the father of her child. The Metropolitan Police apologised for what he did and paid a substantial amount of money to his son also. He sued the police for psychiatric damage as a result of discovering his father's real identity. Jackie was 22 at the time and she met Bob Lambert in East London in 1985. He was pretending to be a left-wing radical called Bob Robinson and he used the name of a boy who died of a congenital heart defect back in 1959. He adopted the names of dead children routinely as he went around his business being a covert agent for the special demonstration squad. Bob had a wife already and two children that lived in Surrey. He returned to them when he left Jackie and left the child to be raised alone. It was only in 2012 that she and her son found out about his identity after reading in the Daily Mail about police spies and recognising Lambert in a picture. Her son said there was a sense that the Metropolitan Police were trying to cover this up as much as they could. It feels like they didn't genuinely want to help me resolve it. The Metropolitan Police claim that they don't condone sexual relationships, but evidence shows there was very routine in undercover operations during that time. And of course, people will say this was the 80s, the police should be operating differently, but it's just an example of how the police can abuse powers sometimes that are given to them. So I really want to hear what people's opinions are on this story. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe, and I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.